here in this place to praise God. If He is lifted up, He will draw all men to Himself. Do you realize He's lifted up as we die daily of ourselves? As we carry our cross daily, He's lifted up. And if He be lifted up, He's drawing all others to Himself. And knowing that, knowing that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, should cause you and I to just be jubilant. Jubilant in our hearts, jubilant in our minds, jubilant in our souls and spirits. Jubilant, celebrating, exalting Him and lifting Him up. Circumstances have nothing to do with our praise of our God. Let me ask you this question. Do you ever give much thought to the end of life on this earth and just focus and meditate on Jesus focus and meditate on heaven focus about what it's going to be like when we get there do you ever just think about that does it ever cross your mind that all the redeemed those who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior all of heaven all of the angels and even Christ himself along with God the Father, is going to be there, our time in heaven, celebrating, celebrating God's great salvation to all the redeemed. Does that cause you just to be lifted up just a little bit? Does that cause you to feel good in your heart of hearts and in your mind and in your spirit and your soul? The confidence and the assurance that we're going to be with Him? And you know what's going to be taking place there? A celebration. A marriage supper of the Lamb is going to be taking place. And it's going to be a sight to behold. A sight to behold. Let's read about this. So we could take some time today. And in God's Word, and with the Spirit of God being with us, His manifest presence, we can begin the celebration of heaven here today on this earth and in this place, and in our hearts, and in our minds. Revelation 19, beginning in verse 1. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven, saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are His judgments, because He has judged the great harlot, who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again they said, Alleluia! Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne, saying, Amen! Alleluia! Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God! All you His servants and those who fear Him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia! For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give Him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. At the marriage supper of the Lamb, it's going to be a celebration of glorious praise. 
Do you understand what the hallelujah means? It means praise the name of God. The supper is going to be a hallelujah supper of God's great salvation. Are you glad that God has chosen to call you into this wonderful relationship with Him and has sanctified you and sealed you until the day of redemption because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and because of your surrender to His mighty, great, wonderful salvation. If so, then give Him some praise this morning for what He has done. You know, it's not going to just be us. But the angels who have watched for eons, for centuries, the mercy and the grace of God that He has extended to man. Watch it unfold before their very eyes. You know, His angels do His bidding. They're, they're holy beings that He created. And they have watched. They have watched man fall. They have done the bidding of God to go and minister to the fallen men of God to show them the, that God is alive and that God does love them. And they get to see the glorious celebration of the Son, the sons of God, you and I, the redeemed, gathered together in the holy heaven with God, with Jesus, with all the angels, with the, all the redeemed, the heavenly hosts, and get to see this wonderful celebration that you and I are going to pour out before our Almighty God, singing, Hallelujah, holy is the Lamb, worthy is He to be praised. They're going to celebrate this spectacular sight at the completion of God's salvation. Oh, it's been spoken of for centuries. Back in the book of Isaiah, the 25th chapter, verse 9, He says, And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We waited for Him. He will save us. This is the Lord. We waited for Him. We will be glad and rejoice in His salvation. Oh, we're waiting. And waiting entails an ultimate trust. Do you trust God today, church? Do you trust Him today? There's no need for you and I to be impatient. Oh, we say... With eagerness. It's not said with impatience. I love what Chad was saying during our worship service. Aren't you just ready for Him to come? And don't you want Him to come right now? You see, that's the eagerness of the saints of God that have arrayed themselves, as we read, in the white linen. We rejoice. We're glad. We're awaiting this wonderful salvation. We don't have to be impatient for that salvation because it's ours. Because we're in Christ Jesus. But we can begin celebrating right now, can't we? There's not a thing wrong with it. Jesus has saved us from our sin. And what we need to realize at this Hallelujah Supper, that all the glory, all the glory for everything that has ever been done is going to God. Why? Because He possesses the glory. He possesses the honor. He possesses the power. The glory which has been given to Him will also be given to to you and I on that glorious day of salvation because it comes from God. He will give us glory and all the angels are going to praise Him. You know why? You know why? Because they're going to be looking at what is occurring in our lives. What's going on right then and there with Him. And they're going to be saying, Praise God! Hallelujah! We're happy for you! Uh, finally, finally, you are going to get to enjoy and celebrate as we have been celebrating since the beginning and the making of our being. Celebrate with Him saying, Hallelujah. Praise, glory, and honor go to our God. David said in Psalm 29, verse 12, He says, Given to the Lord, O oh, you mighty ones, given to the Lord the glory due His name, worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. We do not need to forget today and forever that all the praise, all the glory needs to go up from our hearts to Yahweh, Jehovah God. There is no other God but our God. God is supreme. He is in all authority, all over, over all heavenly beings, all, for all over forces of nature. He is more powerful. And over all 
humanity. He is all-powerful. He is omnipotent. He reigns. And the angels praise Him. And we must too. We must too. So what does that call for? That calls for us to adore Him. Exalt Him. Lift Him up. And praise His holy name. Let's lift Him up. And let's praise His name today for who He is. Listen at the supper. It's going to be filled with some hallelujah victory. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ will triumph over all the ungodly evil of the earth. Yes, He's going to destroy the godless politics of this world. Yeah. Is there godless politics in this world today? Yeah. All kinds of stuff. We see it in baseball. We see it in football. All kind of ungodly politics. You know, that's what we talk about. That's what we talk about. When we get talking about our children, we get talking about sports and things of that nature. Oh, it ain't nothing but politics. Let me tell you something. All of it is going to be laid waste. The social politics of this world, the commercial politics of this world, the cultural politics of this world, and get a piece of this, the religious systems of this world are going to be ultimately eliminated. You know what? Huh. There ain't going to be no Baptists. There ain't going to be no Presbyterians. There ain't going to be no Nazarenes. There ain't going to be no Catholics. There sure ain't going to be no Muslims. Y'all get that. There sure ain't going to be no Muslims. Just the redeemed. Just the redeemed of God. They're going to be at the supper. They're going to be at the suppers. And the angels are going to break out and praise to God for the great victory that He has wrought here on this earth because His judgments are righteous. They are true and they are holy. In Revelations eleven seventeen, He says, saying, We give thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and the one who is to come because you have taken your great power and you have reigned. He is going to be the only one who reigns when this life is over. Are you ready for it, church? Are you excited about it, church? Do you want it, church? Because we're going to be filled with a hallelujah of worship while we're there. The 24 elders and the four living creatures are going to burst forth with praise to God in saying nothing but hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I think it's so funny when there's those folks who says, you know, I can't stand those songs that repeat themselves over and over and over again. Let me tell you something. You don't want to go to heaven because worship ain't going to be about you. It's going to be about Him. We might as well go ahead and we might as well start praising Him right now. Lift Him up with me. Hallelujah! 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 Our Lord God omnipotent reigns. He is going to go there and He is going to be with us, our Lord Jesus Christ. And He's going to go before the throne and He's going to be praising the Father just like you and I and just like the elders. And the four living creatures are going to be praising His name and lifting Him up. In Psalms 107 verse 32 it says, Let them exalt Him also in the assembly of the people and praise Him in the company of the elders. Listen, the supper is going to be filled with a hallelujah of God's omnipotent reign. Do you know what omnipotent means? Omnipotent means all-powerful, over all, over everything, omnipotent. There isn't going to be anything over Him. And a voice is going to cry out from the throne of God for all the servants of God. All who fear and reverence Him to cry out with a heavenly host to praise our Lord for He reigns in omnipotence. Listen. Listen to this. The prayer of God's people. What did Jesus give us? Thy kingdom come is about to become a living reality upon this earth forever and evermore. If you believe this, say yes, Lord. If you believe this, say yes, Lord. If you believe this, say yes, Lord. 
in the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, verse 14, he says, To the, to him was given dominion and glory and, and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should sh- serve him. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. Nothing's going to take it away from him. He's going to be there eternally. You and I are going to reign with Jesus Christ forever and ever and more. Are you ready to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ today? <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, brother. Nothing's going to come over him. Oh, listen. On this earth, you know, suppers for the marriage is all about the bride, ain't it? Oh, yeah. What do we say? Oh, it's her day. I want you to note this. The Word of God says, on that day, woo, at the marriage supper, all the focus is going to be on the Lamb of God. He is going to be the cause of our gladness. He is going to be the cause of all our rejoicing. And He deserves to be honored because He has stirred the bride. You and I, saying to you and I, make yourself ready because I'm coming after you. Make yourself ready. Listen, we... The bride of Christ should be preparing ourselves, preparing ourselves in purity to receive the Lamb as our Savior, to follow Him to the ultimate degree with our lives. How do we do that? By denying ourselves, denying ourselves entirely for the Lamb. Giving all of our attention, giving all of our lives, giving all our services, all of our worship, And praise belongs to Him today. Listen, the Word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, verses 19 through 20, He says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Let me ask you something. Are you beginning that supper now? Are you preparing right now? Because it's going to take your entire mind. It's going to take your entire body. It's going to take your entire soul and spirit in order to satisfy Him. Giving it over to Him entirely. He doesn't want 20. He don't want 30. He doesn't want 50. He wants every bit of you to give Him glory, to give Him honor, and to give Him praise. The preparation of the bride. Listen comes through righteousness. This means that we clothe ourselves through the acts of righteous deeds of faith. Believing in Him. Trusting in Him totally. Giving our lives over Him. Being obedient to the mission and the call that He has placed upon every believer's life. Listen, He didn't call you for salvation Just one time. He has called you unto His great salvation for all of eternity. The day of that salvation set in place all of eternity for those who believe Him. And those who are genuine in that salvation are going to desire to follow Him and walk with Him each and every day of our lives. Why? Because we want to clothe ourselves with His righteousness. We want to serve each other. We want to serve Him. We want to love each other. We want to love Him. All these things go in hand in hand. They're part of the clothing. They're part of putting on the garments of praise before Almighty God. Listen, it's time to prepare because the bridegroom is coming. Are you clothing yourself with righteousness? I pray that you and I are clothing ourselves with holiness. Clothing ourselves with purity. Clothing ourselves with righteousness. Because in doing so, let me tell you something, there's a reward. There's a reward coming to those who serve Him. Rewards and positions to those who are responsible in fulfilling the duties of righteous acts and righteous deeds. Are you fulfilling them today? And as you clothe yourself in white, as the bride does for the groom, listen, it's time It's time to become aware that His coming is at hand. Amen, church? His coming is at hand. Amen, church? Are you ready? Are you adorned? Are you ready to go? Are you dressed? It's time we got ourselves dressed. In 1 John, the second chapter, verses uh, 28 and 29, he says, And now, little children, 
Abide in Him. Remain in Him. Stay in Him. That when He appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. If you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of Him. Christ is coming. And He's coming for a bride that has adorned herself for Him in white. Not a bride that is fake. Not a bride that is a look-alike, but an authentic, genuine, unstained, unprofaned, holy, righteous bride prepared for His groom. Which one are you today? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? See, we don't want no off-white. We don't want no antique white. We don't want no oyster white. We want pure white. Bride in fine linen. Pride pure and holy. Pure and holy. Listen. This marriage supper is being prepared. And it's going to be a blessed. It's going to be a glorious event. It's going to be spectacular in celebration. With the entire heavenly host present at the banquet hall of God. Let me ask you something. Are you going to be there, church? Are you going to be there, church? You see, there's going to be a majestic celebration. Let me tell you something. Disney World ain't got nothing on the fireworks that's going to be going off in heaven. You know that? Hallelujah, that's right. Praise His name. Glorify Him. Lift Him up. Woo! Exalt Him. He's worthy to be praised. Glory to His name. Praise to our God. Listen, it's going to be such a majestic celebration. And we're going to be gathered there to worship the Lord God, our Maker. And worship Him alone. You know, you hear people say, Oh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go look for so-and-so. I'm going to make sure so-and-so's there. Let me tell you something. That is not going to amount to a hill of beans. It's not going to amount to anything. The only thing that you and I believe it or not, those who are the redeemed and those who are the bride, they're going to be looking for Almighty God, the source and the promise of our salvation. And we're going to give Him praise. And we're going to give Him praise. And if we're going to give Him praise there, as He says, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Woo! Lift Him up, church. Lift Him up, church. Psalms 95 and 6 says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord God, our Maker. My question to you today is, are you ready? Are you that bride? Are you that precious, holy, pure bride? Is your life, are you, are you allowing the blood of Jesus Christ to come upon you and wash away the stains of pride, arrogance? Oh, are you, are you willing to do that? See, if you're willing to humble yourself before Him, you're willing to humble yourself and say, get rid of these things. Take away the sin of unforgiveness and give me a heart of forgiveness. Take away that heart that doesn't love but certain people and give me a heart that loves all peoples because this is the love of God. He said in His Word, My Spirit, my Spirit is in you. And if my Spirit is in you, it's going to come out of you. This is going to be a part of you, part of your character, part of who you are. Are you ready, church? Are you a bride that is ready for the groom? Let's pray. Mighty God, I just thank you for the day. I thank you for the power of your spirit. Lord, 